I'm Mary Baker from the Brunswick Library. Welcome to Create with the Library. And while we miss seeing all of you at the library, we certainly appreciate you joining us for these programs online. And today's program is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be able to use some of those things that you probably have at home. Now, you remember when beading was the rage? And we all went out and got the tools and you couldn't go into a craft store without buying another string of really gorgeous beads. And then of course, like any craft, it kind of wanes and you pick up something else and you start working on something else for a while and all of those beading supplies just sit there gathering dust. Well, today we're gonna get those back off out again. So it's gonna be something a little different though. No earrings, no necklaces, no rings. Today, we're going to make a beaded tree of life. As you can see, you don't need too much to make a beautiful tree of life. Uh, I have my tools out, my supplies, and some samples that we've done. You can see it's not a whole lot. Uh, I have one that I've made that's quite large, it's about eight inches wide, another one that's about five, and, and then another one that's about three. So it all depends on what you like. Uh, the tools we're going to need today are definitely wire cutters. You're going to be using uh, a lot of wire today. Bent nose pliers, and I have two of them here. I like to be able to have one uh, plier that I can hold with one hand and then bend with the other. And they, uh, they're they just like a regular needle nose plier. It's just bent and I think I find that a little bit easier for me to see what I'm working on. But a regular pair of needle nose pliers would be just fine. It's nice to have the small round nose pliers. Those will allow you to make curls and, and twists that uh, you couldn't make with your regular bent nose pliers. And then finally, not necessary, but I find them very helpful. These are a nylon jaw plier. And what I do with these is I run the wire through it that allows me to straighten out any kinks that might be there. Not necessary, but really handy. Of course, the other things you're going to be needing will be your beads. You can't really see, uh, unfortunately, in this, but this particular string has got several different colors in it, which makes me happy. I can uh, going to try and make something that looks like a cherry tree. So I've got some pinks and some browns and some greens, even some dark, dark colors here. The wire itself. We're going to be using 26 gauge wire today. Uh, the higher the number, the thinner the wire. Uh, the 26 gauge is pretty teeny tiny. Uh, you can certainly use something that's a little larger. I want to say this one I probably did with a 20 gauge. Um, it makes kind of a problem for threading your beads though sometimes. Sometimes your beads, uh, the holes are too small to be able to use a 20 gauge. So I'm gonna be using 26 today. The other wire you may want to have as a heavier wire, this is a 16 gauge wire. If you want to make your own exterior ring, which I did with this one, uh, you need to have a heavier wire. Now, you don't have to make the exterior ring if you don't want to. But if you happen to have some 16 gauge, you can certainly make your own. Find something that's the right size to wrap it around, a, a salt and pepper shaker or a, a spray can of paint or something that's about the right diameter. You can use that to wrap to make your, uh, your, your exterior ring. The other thing that's possible is you can go to the craft stores and buy them pre-made. They come in a variety of sizes. This is probably a three inch. I think this one's a four inch. And of course this one's the five and the eight. Um, so it gives you some choices. The reason I happen to like these is they're heavier, which means they're a little bit more rigid, a little easier for me to hold on to as I'm working with my beads. So the first thing we're going to do is add our hanging ring to our exterior ring. You're going to be using 16 gauge wire for that. It's a little bit heavier, so it's going to hold the weight of the tree of life. I cut off, I don't know, about five inches of it. Um, it, uh, you know, don't have to be real exact here. You're going to be needing your round nose pliers. 
and you're going to be putting them at about the one-third, two-third mark on your wire. Take your top part, my hand's in the way, I'm sure you can't see a thing, and wrap it around the plier so that you create an L shape with it. You're going to be wrapping the horizontal leg around the vertical leg. Maybe two to three wraps is, is more than enough. You can see as you reach to the back, now my pliers are in the way. So I'm taking my pliers out, flipping, bringing that back to the front again, and continuing my wrap. Not rocket science, but a little bit awkward. First couple times you do it, don't feel bad. If it doesn't work the first couple times, didn't work the first couple times for me either. Whoop. Shouldn't be looking at the camera. I do goofy things, but that's plenty. Now, I don't know if you can see, but my wraps are not exactly as tight as I'd like, and that always makes me a little bit nuts. So I'm going to take my bent nose pliers or your, your regular needle nose pliers, tighten those up just a little bit so they look a little bit more professional. The other thing that's going to be wonky is that uh, actual loop, hanging loop, but we can straighten that out once we get it on our exterior ring. I like to put my hanging loop right over the join there. Any uh, y, any loop here is going to have a joint, and I like to cover that with my hanging piece. So I'm going to take my hanging loop, put it right in that area with the two legs going on either side of the ring, and then start wrapping those legs around the ring. You know, assuming I'm coordinated enough to do that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, not fork knocks. You don't have to do this a million and a half times. About two times around on each side is going to be fine. There's my one side. Hold on to it while I wrap the other side. Again, my loops are a little bit far apart, so I'm going to use my pliers, squeeze those in together so they're the way I like them. That was a little bit too much of a squeeze. The other thing that I like to do is kind of determine a right and a wrong side. It's like right and wrong side of your fabric um, so that I'm always having unfinished ends on the same side of the ring. So I'm going to make this my, my wrong side of my ring. There they are. I'm going to cut my excess wire here. Always make sure you take your pliers and tap that down so it's nice and tight and it's not going to catch on anything. So if this is my wrong side of my ring, I'm going to bring this other leg around a little bit more and then cut that one. So that both my cuts are roughly at the same spot. They're both going to be hidden a little bit. Ooh, that didn't work too well. Let's try that again. And then my pliers to crack down the edges. And now you're ready with your hanging ring. The other thing that can often be helpful, sometimes these guys want to swing around your ring. They don't want to stay put. This one is going to behave, so that's kind of nice. Uh, having a piece of masking tape can be handy. You can just put it on either side. That'll help keep your ring in position. This is also the point where if your hanging ring has gotten a little bit out of square, and this one has, it's not too bad, but it is a little bit, where you can take your pliers and you can kind of straighten that up a little bit. And now we're ready to start on the Tree of Life itself. To make the Tree of Life itself, you're going to need a lot of your 26 gauge wire. Uh, you'll, I used 12 pieces of it and two pieces at a time. I cut this at about 12 inches. This might be a little bit less, but again, I have that bad habit of never measuring anything. You're going to take your two, kind of fold them in half a little bit, find kind of a, a halfway point, and now wrap it around the ring. Doesn't matter where, things are going to be kind of loosey-goosey for a little bit. Wrap it at least one time with each set of legs. 
you want to make sure that the amount of wire you're using is about the same on both sides. Now you've started your first leg of your tree of life. Again, I kind of like to make sure that my wraps are close together. I think that looks neater. In this case, this is such small, fine wire. I can usually do that with my fingers, but you can use your, your pliers again if you'd like to do that. When you have your wraps, take your wire and twist it together. We're gonna to be forming the roots of the tree. Now, roots are always twisted, so it doesn't have to be neat. You can see I'm not even holding those wires with my fingers. It's okay, whatever way they go is just fine. I'm doing a couple of, of wraps for what will become the root. You can see in this one, you've got a couple of wraps around. Some of them I left open and loose. Some of them I did tighter. Probably the first time you do this, it's better to do it a little bit tighter, but those will be the beginning of your roots of your tree. Now you get to do this six more times, or sorry, five more times. All right, all of my sets of roots are now on. Um, was it as awkward as all of this looks? Yeah, yeah, it really was. There's really no easy way to do this. Um, but this is the most awkward part of the whole deal. Now we get to start making the trunk and you can gather all of these together. Do we have to be careful about it? Do we have to be neat about it? No, you don't. Gather them in a great big bunch and just start twisting. Now I can feel they're not twisting in my hands. They're just kind of wrapping. So I'm gonna grab it with the pliers. So to kind of take a look at it in terms of proportion, that's taking it up to here. That's probably a little more than I need, but that's fine. At this point, you want to think about, do I want my trunk to be centered right there on the ring? Do I want it to be a little bit off to the side, maybe kind of a, a bonsai looking thing? Think about how you want your, your uh, tree of life to go. And don't worry about these roots. We're going to come back and we're going to play with those roots and make them look a little bit better. But for now, we're going to leave them the way they are. So let's start thinking about the branches. Pull a likely couple of wires. In this case, I'm going to take uh, four wires together. That's going to become one of my branches off to this side. Again, I tend to like uh, odd numbers, so I'll probably do five branches that will then branch into smaller ones. But here's my first one. I'm going to pull some off to the other side. This time I grab three. doesn't really matter how many you grab. just kind of matters how you want your tree to look. It's a good idea to grab enough though, that you're able to then create branches off of it. I'm gonna do more for a center branch because that's, again, kind of the way trees go. So they tend to have a little bit thicker branching in the center. So I'm gonna do a couple that are a little bit, a little bit thicker here in the center. So I have five distinct branches coming off of my tree now. And now, now I get to start making it lovely. I did do this probably a little bit too high. I don't like how that, that looks. So I'm actually going to try moving one of my wrapped branches down a little bit. That brings that one down. That brings this one down a little bit. I like that a little bit better. Do I think it's enough? Mm, maybe not. So I'm gonna bring this down even more. You can see that there really isn't anything final about any of this. It's wire, you can make it go 
however you would like it to go. Now it's looking a little like the Whomping Willow, but we'll try and we'll try and correct that. So now I'm going to start adding some of my beads. I like using the rough cut stones. I like the natural look of those. So I've got some pink ones, I've got some green ones, and I have some brown ones here. Uh, not 100% sure I'm going to use the brown ones. We'll see. But I usually start by deciding how I'm going to branch out my tree. This one's only got three twigs on it, so that's a little bit easier. I can already branch out one, twist these two a little bit further, and then branch these part apart again. The more twists you have, the more wires you have, the more branching you can do. So I'm going to start with this one with just one little pink stone on that. And at this point, it's your tree. You can do whatever you would like for your tree to make it look the way you want it to look. Once you've finished beating your tree of life, you're taking all of your wires and wrapping them around the outside of the ring. Those can sometimes be a little bit tricky to get nice and tight, but once you have and you've gotten your tree of life ready to go, the other way to tighten those up a little bit is to take your bent nose pliers and to use them to shape your tree a little bit. Trees aren't nice and straight. So you take it and you bend the wire a little bit, and it will also help to tighten up the wire connections around the ring. You can do it with your roots. I always like to have kind of crookedy roots. If you've got enough play in your trunk, you can do it a little bit with the trunk of the tree. You can do it with your, with your branches. And like I say, it's gonna give it a little bit more of a natural look as well as tightening up some of these connections along the side. And there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Create with Library. There's some resources posted below if you need some more ideas. And if you've got some ideas yourself for other editions, please put them in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more new content every week. Thanks very much.